text, 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 text. I know that I said at the end of the last video that it was possible that we start working on a pathfinding today. And I actually even started recording the beginning of the pathfinding, but then I realized that we are still missing something. And it is the possibility to write text on our tiles. And the first utility of that is to be able to display the tile indexes on top of them. Because otherwise, we don't really know which tiles we are working with, and it's way more complex to construct the pathfinding without that information. And that's why we are doing that today, so let's get to it. So in Unreal, to be able to display text on top of our tiles, we're gonna use text render actors, which is just a simple way to display a 3D text in the world. But since we are going to spawn one text actor for each of our tiles, we're gonna need a blueprint to control them. So in my debug menu here, I created a new folder, which I named other. And inside it, I created a new blueprint actor, which I named bp underscore debug text on tiles. And we can open it. And in this blueprint, we're gonna start directly by the function that creates a actor in the world. So I created myself a new function, which I named getTextActor, and I'm passing it an index as input. We need an index because we're going to create a mapping between the grid indexes and the text actor that are spawned in the world. That way, if the text written on the tile changes, we are simply going to update the text actor associated instead of just spawning a new one. So I'm passing it an index and I'm returning a text render actor, which is going to be the actor associated to the index. And the next step is actually to create the mapping variable that we're gonna use to map the index to the text actor. And I created myself a new variable, which I named the spawn texts. And it is going to contain all the text actor that we spawned in the world. Then if we look in the top right corner, the type of the variable is an int point for the index. And then I changed the container for a map, a dictionary right here, the last one. And for the second variable type, it's a text render actor. And it brings us to the first step of the function, which is to do a find on our variable to see if we already spawned an actor for this index. And then we are setting the result of the find into a local variable that we can then check if it is valid because we don't want to spawn a second actor if we already have one for this index. And if it's true, well, we can simply return it because we found an actor valid for this index. So we're going to use it. But if it's not valid, it means that we need to spawn a new actor. So we are doing a spawn actor, passing it the class of the text render actor. For the transform, we can set it to zero. The collision handling override is gonna be always spawn, ignore collision. And then we are getting the return value of this spawn actor and setting it into the variable. And then we have to make sure to add the new spawned actor into the spawn text map. That way, the next time we are looking for it, well, we are gonna find it. So now that we spawned a new actor in the world, we're gonna take a little bit of time and set its default settings which is what I'm doing here by disabling the tick by calling the set actor tick enabled and setting it to false. And I'm also disabling the collisions, which is pretty important to do since we're gonna have multiple hundred copies of this actor in the world. Otherwise, it will be a little bit expensive for nothing. And the last thing I wanna do to initialize my actor is to make sure to center the text both horizontally and vertically. So to do that, we simply get the text render component on this actor that we just spawned and we are setting both horizontal and vertical alignment. And that's it, we can now simply return the actor at the end of the function. And now, every time we're gonna need a text actor corresponding to a specific index, we can simply call this function, which is going to first check if the actor already exists and return it to us if it's the case. But otherwise, it's going to spawn a new one, add it to the mapping, initialize some default variables, and then return it to us. That way, everywhere else in the code, we don't have to worry about if the actor already exists or not. Okay, so now that we have a function that spawned the text actor in the world, we're gonna create a second function. This one to destroy the text actor that we don't need anymore. So create a new function. So here I have my new function. I named it destroy text actor and I'm passing it the index as input. And here for the logic, it's pretty simple. The first step is to get the actor inside the spawn text list and promote it into a variable. And then if this actor is valid, which means that we found it inside the list, well, we can simply destroy it. And finally, we have to remove the index from the list because we don't need the index inside the list anymore since the actor is destroyed. So we just do a simple remove like so. And that's it. That's all we needed for the function that destroys a text actor. But now, since we are in the destroying part of things, I'm going to create another function. So new function. And we're gonna use this one to get rid of all the text actor that we spawned in the world, which is gonna be useful every time we destroy the grid, for example. 
I name the my function clear all text actors. Then in there, I'm getting all the values of my map, so it's going to return me all the text actor that we spawned in the world. We can then loop through all these actors and destroy them. And after that, we can simply clear the spawn text map, like so. So now all the actors are destroyed and the map is empty. Perfect. And the last thing we need before adding text to our tiles is a reference to the grid that we're gonna use to map the tile indexes to the data that it contains. So I'm gonna go in my big and play. And here, since it's just a debug blueprint, it's not really important the way we access the grid right now, so I'm just getting it using a get all actor of class in the big and play, and I'm setting it into a variable. And that's it, we can now create the function to write the text on the tile, so new function which I named update text on tile and I'm passing it an index as input. And here the first step is to get the grid index and try to find the data of the grid index. So we are getting it inside the grid tiles to see if the index already exists in the grid. And if so, we are going to set the data into a local variable. But if it's not the case, we are going to try to destroy the text actor that we spawned for the index because we don't want to keep a text actor that we don't need anymore. And I'm actually going to do the same thing in the case that the data type is not a walkable, so in the case that it is an obstacle or a non-tile, we don't want to write text on it right now, so I'm just gonna make it destroy the text actor in the case that the tile type is not walkable. And now that we're sure that we want to spawn a text actor for this tile, we are simply going to call the getTextActor function, which is either going to spawn a new one or returns us a one that already exists for this index, and then we can set it into a local variable. And it's now time to decide which text we want to write on the tile, so I'm creating myself a new variable of type string, which I named text. And right now, since I want to write the indexes on the top of my tiles, I'm using an append to append my index x and my index y separated by a comma. And then we can simply set the text on the text actor by calling the setText function that is on the text render component of the actor and passing it to the text which gives us a text actor in the world with the tile indexes written on it. But right now the text actor is in the middle of the world because we never set its transform according to the tile index, so we're just gonna move it to the right location, otherwise it's not really gonna be useful for us. And that's how we're gonna do it, so I'm getting my text actor and I'm doing a set actor transform on it. For the location, I'm using the data transform location of my tile and I'm adding one in Z, so my text is a little bit above the tile, not exactly at the same level. For the rotation, because I want my text to be aligned properly with the default camera, I'm changing the rotation, so it's 0 in X, 90 in Y, and 180 in Z. And finally, for the scale, since I think the scale is a little bit too small by default, I'm just multiplying it by 2, so 2 to 2 for the scale of my text. And that's it for this function, just so to recap a little bit, the first action is to get the data from the grid tiles, and then we compare to see if the tile type is walkable. If the tile doesn't exist in the grid tiles, or if the tile type is not walkable, so if it's an obstacle or a tile none, we are simply going to destroy the text because we don't want to have text right there. Otherwise, if all the conditions are true, we are getting the text actor corresponding to that index, then we decide which text we want to write on it, so we are setting the text and then setting the text on the actor, and finally we are positioning the text above the tile. And it's finally time to go call our functions, but since this blueprint is a debug blueprint and the objective is to delete it later on in the process so it doesn't consume any performances, we are going to use callbacks. That way this blueprint is not going to be essential for the game loop. Okay, so I'm going to go add some callbacks in the BP grid, so I'm gonna go in entry in my grid folder and open the BP grid. And here in the bottom left corner I'm creating myself a new event dispatcher which I named untile data updated and in the top right corner right here I've added a new input which is an index and it is an end point. And now we're gonna go call this callback everywhere in the code that we update the data of our tiles. Which happens in four places in our code. The first one is in the add grid tile at the end of the function we can simply call the callback because we added a new tile to our grid. Then the second one is in the remove grid tile, so when we are removing the tile from the grid, we are also updating the data itself, and then we can call the callback. The next place is the add state to tile right here, so at the end of the function we can call our callback after adding a new state to the tile and modifying its data. And same thing for the remove state from tile, so at the end of the function we can simply call the callback. And that's it for this callback, but since I know that we are gonna need a second callback to know when the grid is destroyed, I'm going to create a second callback, which I simply named onGridDestroyed. 
And then I went into the destroy grid function and I did the callback at the end. And that's it, we're done with the new callbacks, so we can go back in the debug text to bind ourselves to them. So I'm gonna go in my big and play when we are setting the grid. And here I've bind myself to the first callback that we created, so the untile that I updated. And when this callback is called, we are calling the function update text on tile. That way, when the tile is updated, we are updating the text. And we are also binding ourselves to the ungrid destroy callback, passing it to the clear all text actors function. That way, when the grid is destroyed, we are destroying all the text actor that we spawned. And it's now time to go test the code, but since this blueprint is not in the world right now, we need to add it. But uh, since this blueprint is related to the debug menu, I'm actually going to add it as child actor of the debug menu. So I'm gonna go in my debug menu and open the BP debug menu. And here I added a new child actor component, which I named the child actor underscore text on tiles. And I went on the right side right here and changed the child actor class to the new blueprint that we just created. So BP underscore debug text on tiles. Now, that way, every time we are adding a debug menu into the world, it will also add the blueprint that adds the text on top of the tiles. And that's it, we can now go test this. So I'm gonna go in entry and press play. And here, wow, that's actually good. We can see the text on the tiles already, that's good. If I move my grid around, oh yeah, it updates the tiles and it also updates the text on them, so that's good. Same thing if I generate it based on the environment, it also works, it doesn't spawn text where there's no tiles, that's good, that's exactly what we want. And let's say if we add new tiles like so, we can see that the text are following them. Same thing if I delete them like so. That's good, the other thing I wanna test is if I increase or decrease the tile, yes, it works, the text follows them, and if I change the tile type to, let's say, obstacle, yes, it deletes the text also. Perfect, it works as expected. And the last thing I wanted to do in today's video is to add the possibility to toggle on and off the text written on the tiles, so we don't have to have text written on the tiles all the time, which I'm gonna do in my BP debug text on tiles, so we can go back there. Here I'm going to create a new function. I named the function setShowTileIndexes, passing it a boolean that I named also showTileIndexes. And then I'm taking this input and setting it into a variable inside the blueprint that I named showTileIndexes also. Then we do a branch on the new variable, and if it's false, it means that we don't want to display any text on the tiles right now, so we're gonna simply destroy all the text actors, so clear all text actors like so. But if it's true, it means that we wanna see the text on the tile, so we're gonna simply update all of them uh, in the case that we destroyed them uh, when unchecking uh, that checkbox uh, before. So to do that, I'm getting all the grid indexes that are in the grid, I'm getting the keys to access only the indexes, I'm looping through all of them, and then I'm calling uh, the function update text on tile. And there's one last little thing to change, and it is inside the update text on tile function, because this function is also called via a callback, so we have to make sure to check the value of this boolean inside this function also, so I'm just gonna double click on it to open it. And right here at the beginning of the function, I'm checking if the show tile indexes is true before executing all the code. So now the last thing we have to do is to add a checkbox inside the debug menu to be able to change the value of this boolean right here. So we're gonna go do that, but since we also want to create a new tab for the pathfinding for the next video, I think it would be a good idea to create it today, that way we're gonna have it ready for the next one. So we're gonna go in our tabs right here, and I will simply duplicate the tab grid, so Control w on the tab grid. I renamed it tab underscore pathfinding and open it. Here I'm deleting the grid generation category and the environment category also. Then for the action, I'm only going to keep the select tile, so I'm gonna delete the three other ones. And for the checkboxes, I'm only going to keep the first one, so we can delete all the other fours. And that's it, I just renamed the checkbox, so it's written checkbox underscore show text index on tiles, and I also renamed the text, so it's the same thing. And we can now go in the graph. And here I actually don't need any of that, so I'm just gonna select everything and delete it. And on the left we can delete all three functions, uh, and also the two variables we created. And now if we compile, everything should work, perfect. Then we're gonna recreate the construct event, uh, and then we're gonna access uh, the debug text on tile blueprint by getting it inside the world uh, using a get actor of class. Uh, and once that's done, we're gonna get the value of show tile indexes inside the blueprint and use it to set the isCheck state on our checkbox. 
That way, if the value is true by default, the checkbox is gonna be checked, and the opposite, if it's false, the checkbox is gonna be unchecked. And the last thing we have to do is to change the value of this boolean based on if the user changed the check state of the checkbox. So we can simply select the checkbox and click on the left, right here, bottom left corner to create the new event. So this event is called whenever the user changed the check state of the checkbox and we are using that to set the show tile indexes on our blueprint. And that's it for this new tab for now, so I'm just gonna compile and save it and we're gonna go in the debug menu to add it. So here in my debug menu, I will open W debug menu. In the top right here, I will duplicate the button that we add for the grid. Then I change the text written on the button, so it's written pathfinding, and I also change the name of the button, so it's written button underscore pathfinding, and the text component is text underscore pathfinding also. And now in the user created widget, we can get the tab pathfinding that we just created, then drop it inside the widget switcher, so it's the last element of the widget switcher, like so. And now the last thing we have to do is to associate the button with this tab, so we can select the button, go all the way down, and implement the unclick event, like so. And I placed it near all my other buttons for all the other tabs. So we now have tab 1, 2, 3 for the other buttons. And we just added the tab 4 for the tab pathfinding. So when we are clicking on the button pathfinding, it shows the pathfinding tab. And there's just one last little thing to change, and it is to change the color of the button when it is selected. So I'm going to go in my update button color function, like so. And here I simply added a new element in my array to connect my new button. And it's now time to go test all that, so I'm gonna compile, go back in the level, and press play. And here in the top left corner I have my new tab, the pathfinding tab, that works exactly the same as the other tabs. And when I check the checkbox to, to show the tile indexes, I can see that the tiles are appearing or disappearing, perfect. And then if I want to, I can select the checkbox and go in my grid to change the grid generation a little bit, the tile indexes are still there, and then I can go back in the pathfinding and toggle it off if I want to. So perfect, everything works as expected, so that concludes today's video, and I'm gonna see you in the next one, in which we're gonna start working on the pathfinding for reals this time. So bye bye!